In this tutorial, I'm going to show you five free Photoshop alternatives that you can use to start editing images today. And the last one on this list is one that I used for years. It's the one I used right up until I got Photoshop, and it's awesome. And we're getting started right now. Before we get started, let me know in the comments down below if you have a favorite photo imaging program or photo editing program, and let me know what that is. Let everybody else know as well. Share your knowledge. If I've missed any in this list that you think should be on here of free photo editing apps that are very useful, also let us know in the comments down below. It's not an exhaustive list. There are others. These are the ones I have some experience with, so they're the ones I'm showing you. But there are others. Just let us know in the comments down below. The first one we're going to look at is the easiest one to learn. It's a great place to get your feet wet if you've never used an imaging program before, and that is paint.net. It is Windows only. It is very similar to Microsoft Paint that comes with Windows, which was the first ever photo editing program that I've used in my life because it came with Windows, and I opened it up when I was a kid, and I doodled, and I made these awesome designs. Not awesome, but I made these designs in there, and this it was my first experience. And paint.net is a great place to get your feet wet. It has layers, which means you can do transparencies. It has some special effects, not many. And the fact that it's so simple means you can learn it faster. So if this is your first time editing photos, check out paint.net. The next one is Pixlr at pixlr.com. There's a web app and a mobile app for both Android and iOS. It requires Flash if you're using a browser, and it has some great features and functions. It's a level up from paint.net, and it, if you scroll down a little bit, shows you some of the features and some of a bit of how it looks and allows you to edit images on the go because it's on your phone. So if you take photos for your blog or for your clients or for whatever on your phone, this would be a great way where you can quickly edit them on your phone and then upload them to where they have to go. The next one is Sumo Paint over at sumopaint.com. All these links are in the description down below. And if you find this kind of content useful, make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss anything because I'm publishing videos, helpful videos, hopefully helpful, like this all the time. So make sure you subscribe. Sumo Paint looks a lot like Photoshop. If you've seen Photoshop before, which I'm sure you have if you've been around for a little while, it has a, a toolbar on the left, menus on the top, these boxes on the right that do certain things, a lot like Photoshop. So the learning curve for this is a bit steeper than the first two, but it's still not as bad as Photoshop would be. And it allows you to have layers, which means you can do transparencies, which means you can uh, have an image with parts of it being see-through. So the background of a website would come through the image. That's what I mean by transparency. It has a lot of special effects. It's a great tool. It's free. It has a web app and an iPad app, and that's all it has right now. They might be expanding in the future. I don't know, but that's all it has, but it's free. Check it out. The next one I use is Canva. Now this is one that I still use currently, but I don't use it for myself. I have outsourcers use it because I have in my business standard operating procedures or SOPs where I explain to an employee or an outsourcer what needs to be done to get a certain result. So if I'm creating a blog and I need blog images, I'm going to show the steps that need to be taken to create the images that the blog needs. And I use Canva in those SOPs because I don't know what kind of technology the outsourcer has, but chances are, if they're an outsourcer on the internet, they have access to the internet, which means they can use this free software. And I don't use it for crazy technical stuff. The special effects are very limited. The amount of editing you can do on an image is very limited, but you can create images for blog posts. You can do overlays, you can create social media images, things of that nature very easily. And that's why I still use it today but it's just the outsourcers that use it. I don't use it personally to create images. These days, I use just Photoshop. And the last one, which is my favorite in the list, if you have some experience with photo editing, I suggest you get GIMP. It is free, it runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac, and it is the closest you will get to Photoshop features and functions for free. It's a very complex program, but it's not as complex as Photoshop. Photoshop does more, but GIMP does a lot. And you may never have to go beyond GIMP, to upgrade to Photoshop. And the reason I ultimately did was because you can do scripting in Photoshop, on a Mac anyway. I'm sure you can on Windows too. And the scripting allows you to do Photoshop functions without actually opening Photoshop. So you can automate stuff, and I'd love to automate stuff. But back to GIMP, it's free, it's awesome, it has a bit of a steep learning curve, but it has pretty much everything you need, and it's the one that I used up until I had Photoshop. And if you think I missed some great free software for photo editing, make sure you leave it in the comments down below so we can all share new knowledge, and I will see you in the next video.